force and pressure, contact and non-contact forces. You know the many different things that force can do. Let us now study the different kinds of forces. Forces can be divided into two types based on how the force is applied. Types of forces Contact force and non-contact force Contact force when objects actually touch each other. Non-contact force when objects do not touch each other. Can you lift a bucket of water without holding it? No. Generally, to apply a force on an object, your body has to actually touch the object. The contact may also be with the other objects, like a stick or a piece of rope. Forces which act on a body either directly or through a connector are called contact forces. Let us look at different types of contact forces. Look at this lady lifting the sand and carrying it on her head. Look at this person pushing the pedals and riding the bicycle. Look at this man pulling and pushing at his muscles to exercise. The kids are applying force by moving their body parts, arms and legs. This force is called muscular force. Muscular force is the force applied using parts of the body. What force do you think is being used here? The muscles of animals are being used here. So this is also muscular force. The force applied by humans or animals using parts of the body is called muscular force. Muscular force is a type of contact force. We use the force of tractors to do work on a farm. We use the force of motor vehicles from time to time. Machines are used to do many tasks in factories, offices and homes. The force that is applied using machines is called mechanical force. Mechanical force is also a type of contact force. What did we just learn? There are two kinds of forces, contact forces and non-contact forces. In contact forces, the objects actually touch each other. In non-contact forces, the objects do not touch each other. The force applied by humans or animals using parts of the body is called muscular force. The force that is applied using machines is called mechanical force. Muscular and mechanical forces are contact forces. What happens when you jump up? You come down. What happens when you throw a ball up? It comes down. Why does everything come down? The earth pulls everything towards itself. This force is called gravity or gravitational force. It is because of gravity that any object that is thrown upwards goes slower and slower, then stops and then starts coming down. Let us see what happens when we throw a ball up. We give it a force in the upward direction and so the ball starts moving upwards. The speed of the ball reduces more and more and slowly becomes zero. Why does the speed go on reducing? Because the ball is trying to move up and the gravity is trying to pull it down. Gravity 
makes the ball slower when it moves up. When the speed of the ball becomes zero, it cannot go up anymore. Then the ball starts to come down. Why does it come down? Gravity is pulling it down. As the ball starts moving downwards, the speed starts increasing. That is because gravity is helping the ball move. The more the ball travels down, the faster it becomes. What happens if the ball hits the ground? It bounces. A ball that hits the ground with more speed will bounce higher. A ball is thrown out from window A and window B. Which ball will bounce higher when it hits the ground? Window B is higher than window A. The ball from window B will travel more. The ball from window B will be faster. The ball from window B will bounce higher. Gravity doesn't only act on objects that are thrown up. It constantly acts on all objects around us. That is why you have to apply a force to lift an object. You have to lift it against the gravitational force. If the object has more mass, more gravity is acting on it. So objects with greater mass, heavier objects, need more force to be lifted. What is this? This is a spring balance. We use it to find how much mass an object has. We use it to find how heavy an object is. We attach the object to the hook and then hold the balance. Gravity pulls the object downwards and we can measure the weight of the object. The greater the mass of the object, the greater is the weight. So, a heavier object is pulled down more. Weight of an object is the gravitational force acting on it. So, gravity is a force that pulls everything towards the center of the earth. Is gravity a contact force or a non-contact force? Gravitational force is a non-contact force. What did we just learn? The force applied by the earth to pull all objects towards itself is called gravitational force or gravity. Gravity gives objects weight. The more the mass of an object, the more is the gravity that acts on it. That makes it heavier. Gravity is a non-contact force. As objects fall towards the earth, gravity makes their speed increase. As objects are thrown up and away from earth, gravity makes their speed decrease. That's why they fall back. Bring a pin near this magnet. What happens? The magnet attracts the pin and the pin gets stuck to the magnet. What is the force that is pulling the pin to the magnet? It is a magnetic force. Magnets have different ways in which they can behave. We know that when two like poles of a magnet come together, they repel, while two unlike poles attract. It is the magnetic force that makes them attract or repel. Magnets are useful to separate iron objects in a junkyard. The maglev train works on the idea of magnetic repulsion, like poles repel. Magnetic levitation is equal to maglev. Levitate means to raise. Magnetic levitation means raising by using magnetic power. This kind of train was invented in Great Britain, but the fastest speed achieved was 580 km per hour by the Japanese people. Now think, is magnetic force a contact force or a non-contact force? 
non contact force magnetic force is a non contact force what did we just learn the force by which a magnet attracts certain things towards itself is called the magnetic force depending on which poles are together magnets can attract or repel magnetism is a non contact force has your hair sometimes stood on its end when you bring a comb close to it this may have happened to you sometime in the winter what is the force that is pulling the hair towards the comb it is the force of static electricity it is called static electric force try to rub a balloon on dry hair you can see that the hair tries to stick to the balloon it is because of the force of static electricity now bring this balloon that you have rubbed on your hair close to the bits of dry paper the bits of paper try to stick to the balloon so the balloon is attracting the bits of paper when you rubbed the balloon on your hair you created static electricity and this force attracted the paper you created static electricity when you rubbed the balloon with the hair this force of static electricity attracted the pieces of paper Static electric force is a very weak force. You can't see it move heavy objects. What did we just learn? Static electricity is created when we rub some objects with certain things. The force of static electricity is called static electric force. Static electricity is also a non-contact force.